In this tutorial, we'll take a look at permutations involving identical objects, so when some of the objects are the same, it's actually pretty, uh, you don't really bother this when every object is the same because there's only one permutation if they're all the same. So in the, the first little example here, we're going to list all the permutations of the letters in the words C and C. So C as in water, S-E-A, and to see something, S-E-E, -E, and taken three at a time. So if we do the words, the word SEA, notice that all the letters are different, and there are six ways to arrange them. So we can put the S first, and then an E and an A, or an A and an E, the E first, and then an S first, and then A, A or S for another one. And if we put A first, we can go SE or ES, and that's all the ways to arrange three different objects. Now, so that's, there's six of those, because there's three different objects, and three factorial would be six. <clears throat> now, if we arrange the SEE, -E, there's less of them because two of the objects, the two E's, are identical. So, for example, when we go SEA, if if this if these letters were the same, were, well, since they're different here, that means we can put them in a different order and we get two different permutations. But starting with S, if the two other letters are the same, then there's only way, one way to write it if the S is in the beginning. It's an E and an E after it. So we basically can, can put the S at first in the first spot, or the S in the middle with an E in the end and an E in the other end, or an S at the end and two E's at the beginning. So that's all the number of ways that you can arrange um, S and E and another identical E. So there are three ways to do that. Now, the three factorial is because there's three letters. And we divide it by two. Notice that there are half the number of permutations here that there are here. We divide it by 2 because there's two identical letters. Now, 2 is the same as 2 factorial. We're actually dividing it by 2 factorial because there's 2 factorial ways to arrange, which is the same as 2, uh, two identical uh, uh, objects, or 2 objects. So 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial works out to be 3. So there are 3 different permutations of those letters. Now, so here's a general formula. The, if you're taking permutations with uh, some of the objects identical, the number of permutations of n different, or I shouldn't say different, n objects of which a are alike of, of one particular kind are identical, and there are b that are a b number of a different kind that are alike or identical, and c are alike, etc., would be the total number of objects on top, so n factorial on top, and you, you divide that by the factorial of all the repetitions. Now, if you have some of the objects being different, like let's say there's one of something, you don't really bother with dividing it by one factorial, although that's still correct, because one factorial is one if you have objects that there's one of this and one of this and one of this other one. So that's the general formula. So in the example in the bottom part of this page, we're asked how many permutations of the letters of the word Mississippi begin with the letter M. So it, it doesn't say how big we're making this, so the assumption is we're taking all of the letters. So if you count the letters in the word Mississippi, there are 10 of them. So there's 10 letters, and there are 1, 2, three, four identical I's, and one, two, three, four identical S's, and there are two identical P's. So that's why we would take the total number of uh, letters, 10 factorial, and divide it by four factorial times four factorial times two factorial. And that works out to 3,150, which is a lot smaller than 10 factorial. Because there's a whole bunch of letters the same, there really aren't as, there aren't as many uh, different ways we can arrange them. Uh, on to the last example. Uh, Luigi lives five blocks west and seven blocks north of his school. So here's his home right here, and here's his school. So uh, there's the uh, five blocks west, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks north. Starting in September, he decides to walk home a different route every day. And so if there are 20 days of school in the average month, approximately when will he run out of new routes? Now, this problem, uh, in order to go from um, um, school to home, okay, so he's walking home, he's going from school to home, it's really this, he's, he's walking all together five blocks um, west and then seven blocks north. So he starts here and so at some point he has to decide um, which way he's going west. And he's got to turn west 
five times. And in order to get home, he has to at some point turn north seven times. Okay, because that's how many there are. So this problem is really the same as we're kind of reducing this to a simpler problem. Is how many ways could you arrange five W's and seven N's? Because he's turning west five times and he's turning north seven times. So we'll call West W and North N. And so that's twelve objects. So there's twelve turns. So it would be 12 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 7 factorial in the denominator. And that works out to 792. So if there's 20 days of school, if you divide uh, 792 by 20, um, it goes in uh, about uh, 40 times. Okay, So it's a, a long time. So he would be, um, <clears throat> and, and so 40 times, so that's 40 months. Uh, let's say there's an average of uh, 10 months in a school year. So 40 divided by 10 would be uh, four school years. So he would be completing the fourth next grade probably around the end of the school year in uh, June um, when he runs out of new routes. So it's going to, there's almost 800 different routes to go from uh, from school to home. And that's the end of the tutorial.